Now, okay, so I've been meaning to uh, to show you the technique that I'm using for my uh, for my cloning reactions. The technique is called Golden Gate cloning or Golden Gate assembly. I'm using a slight modification of the technique, but just let me uh, let me explain to you what Golden Gate cloning is and uh, how uh, how you can use it if you want something. Actually, it's pretty elegant and uh, it's fairly cheap to uh, to uh, to use. Okay, so first of all, Golden Gate cloning or Golden Gate assembly was developed by these guys right here, anglers and uh, some, and collaborators in 2008. Um, the, the the article, of course, will be in the description. The technique itself is based on type 2S restriction enzymes. Here you have some examples and um, well, what's the difference actually between type 2S and uh, normal type 2 enzymes like EcoR1 or uh, BAM1 or whatever? Well, the difference is that type 2S enzymes cut DNA outside of their, of, uh, their recognition sequences. So, Basically, this uh, this will allow you to to have sticky ends, like in type 2S enzymes, and this will also allow you to eliminate the restriction site from your final construct. How exactly it's, um, is this uh, accomplished? Well, for example, I'm using BSA1, which is a type 2S restric restriction enzyme. So this is the um, the, the enzymes recognition sequence, as you can see here, is highlighted in gray. So this site the, enzy the enzyme will recognize and it will cut one base pair right to the, to the right and it will leave a sticky end right here. So it will leave a four base pair sticky end. In this particular case, it's gonna leave um, a sticky end of C, G, G, G. Uh, and once you cut the from here, you can see that on the left side of the cut, the, the restriction uh, site will remain, but it will be eliminated from the from the right one. So basically, using this technique, you can accomplish like scarless cloning of multiple DNA fragments. It uh, allows you to clone using just one enzyme, um, as opposed to you know using several enzymes and um, in in regular cloning. It allows cloning in just one tube. That's why it's called the one tube one pot reaction. And it allows for cyclical cloning. What this, does this mean exactly? Well, because the restriction site is eliminated after each ligation, this basically allows you to, uh, to have restriction ligation cycles, which of course will greatly, greatly increase your cloning efficiency. How do I use this technique in particular? So I'm using a slightly modified version of it, right? And I wrote a tiny article on this, which highlights and uh, explains exactly the protocol I'm using. So if you want to read it, the link will be in the description below. Um, it's called inexpensive and easy method for six fragment golden gate assembly of whatever. Um, what I've did, I've built a modular plasmid with six fragments. Uh, which is very easy and very cheap to build and this allows me to use the fragments to build new plasmid or just insert new fragments and so on. So basically this is, uh, this, this is the design I'm using. So I'll have six fragments. One of them will gonna be the main module which um, contains the antibiotic resistance gene and the origin of replication, just uh, to, uh, to allow my plasmid to replicate in bacteria. I'll have a promoter module, a coding sequence, which in my case is a GFP. Uh, I'll have a terminator sequence, of course. Uh, this is uh, the polyadenylation signal. I'll have uh, another module, which is a SMAR, so it's a scaffold matrix attachment region, and one more module, which is called DTS-48. This is derived, derived from the, um, 
the SV40 virus. So regarding the design, first of all, you need to design the, primer, the primers to amplify the modules or the fragments that will go into the assembly. For this, you basically need to have like fancy primers that contain uh, on each side restriction sites for BSA-1 with specific overhangs. So in order to design these particular primers, you can just use the NEB Golden Gate assembly tool, which um, allows you to in introduce into the program. For example, you want to clone four fragments. You just put the fragments that you want to clone, uh, that you want to ligate, right, into the program, and the program will automatically give you primers with certain sticky ends that you can use to amplify those fragments according to the to the order that you introduce them. So basically you have four fragments, you can uh, uh, ligate them in any order. So this is uh, what NEV Golden Gate Assembly Tool will, will uh, do for you. It will give you the, the primers and of course it will show you a slight simulation of, uh, of your final product, right? Regarding the workflow, there is one very important step to consider uh, and that's called the domestication of the of the regions that go into the assembly so basically what this means is that you need to remove all of your restriction sites for example i'm using bsa1 so i'll need to remove all of uh, all bsa1 restriction sites from my modules of course, accepting the ones that flank the, the modules that I'm going to use for, uh, for cloning, right? Because if I have like three modules, three, uh, uh, sorry, three BSA-1 restriction sites, this will not help me, okay? Because, um, of course, I'll need to restrict, then ligate, restrict, then ligate, and another additional BSA-1 site will uh, greatly, greatly hinder this, uh, this ligation. For doing this, basically for, for changing one nucleotide, so I can completely remove a BSA-1 site from a, from a fra fragment, I'm using SPRIP. So this is called Single Primary Reaction in Parallel. It's a type of site-directed mutagenesis. And of course, I'm going to link, um, link the article in uh, the description below. Okay? After you do this, after you uh, remove additional sites from your uh, from your construct, you need to PCR your regions of interest using the primers that um, NEB Golden Gate Assembly Tool basically gave you. Okay, and for doing this, you need to use a high fidelity polymerase because you don't want any mutations in uh, in your DNA. I'm using Q5 Master Mix. You basically can use any other type of uh, high fidelity polymerase like PFU and uh, and so on. What I do number four is I'm gonna store the previously amplified fragments in the freezer. For doing this, I'm using a special buffer that's called DNA RNA Shield from Zymo Research. What this buffer does is basically deactivates nucleases and protects my DNA from freeze-thaw cycles. Because um, once I store the fragments in the, in the freezer, of course I'm going to reuse them, I'm going to freeze them, thaw them again and so on. So let's say for example that I have six fragments that I previously amplified using these primers right here. Then I'm going to store them in, uh, in shield in the freezer of course in six uh, separate tubes. Then when I'm ready for, for the assembly, I'm gonna put a certain amount, like 20 microliters of each tube into just one tube. Of course, I'm gonna clean and concentrate them, just one uh, purification step, okay? Just to uh, remove all of the junk, you know, polymerase and uh, nucleotides and whatever I have in, the, in, the, in my reaction. And then, of course, I'm going to assemble them. And uh, for the assembly, you basically going to need the restriction enzyme, which is called BSA-1, and you're going to need T4 ligase. This is how a particular reaction would look for me. 
So I'm just going to mix in one cube 20 microliters of each fragment stored in shield, which I previously, uh, of course, cleaned and concentrated. I'm going to use uh, T4 ligase, BSA1, and of course T4 buffer for the reaction to take place. I'm going to put this in a cycler and I'm going to use uh, this cycle right here. So I'm going to put the tube for one minute at 37 degrees Celsius. Then I'm going to put it at 16 degrees Celsius for one minute. So this is going to be restriction and then ligation. And I'm going to do this for a total of 30 cycles. Afterwards, I'm going to use a five minute uh, soak time at 60 degrees Celsius. Then I'm going to digest with uh, DPN1 to remove all of the background plasmid uh, because remember DPN1 only cuts DNA that has been previously multiplied in bacteria. So remember that I have DNA left from the amplification steps. I need to get rid of that background DNA. I need in my tubes just the fragments to be assembled. Okay. So after the DPN1 digestion, I'm transforming in E. coli in a cloning um, cloning strain. I also have videos about transforming, of course. And then I'm gonna select the mutants using uh, some kind of restriction diagno diagnostic digest, you know, using different enzymes. For example, here I use the ASC1 or uh, uh, BAMH1 and so on, okay? So after I select the mutants, I have uh, my final product. I just want to tell you you can, for the standards, right, for the specific overhangs that give direction to your cloning, you can either use the NEP Golden Gate Assembly tool or you can use the standard that I uh, developed in my article. It's basically so cheap and so easy to use. You just need to replace the regions that anneal to your template in the primer. So just uh, uh, have a look at it and this will allow you to easily add or remove uh, remove modules from uh, from your cloning. Okay, so this is a gel. As an example, uh, the first lane and the last lane are just uh, the ladder. So this is one KB plus ladder. This uh, in this reaction, I have built two plasmids. You can see here, this lane and this lane are just pre-assembled plasmids, so just the DNA fragments that go into the reaction. As you can see here I have six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, here I have an additional six. Of course the fragments are not going to be the same because I'm using, uh, I'm building two plasmids. And these lanes right here are the plasmids that uh, I've put on a gel post assembly, so after I've done the assembly cycle. Of course the assembly will not be 100% efficient. You'll have tiny fragments, uh, you'll have fragments that haven't been assembled completely and so on. But what I'm mainly interested in here are those two fragments right here. So this one and this one, because these will be my assembled plasmids. So this DNA will transform into E. coli and um, this, uh, these fragments right here will turn out to be my, uh, my plasmid, so my final assembled product, right? Okay, I have also a snap gene simulation just to, uh, to give you a better idea on uh, how all of this works. So basically, uh, these are my six fragments that I previously amplified using PCR. I have the origin of replication and the antibiotic resistance gene fragment, which I'm going to use as a vector. And then I'm going to insert five more fragments. I'm just going to choose them, okay, in the direction that I want them to clone in, right? So uh, they have a certain direction. So first of all would be the promoter, then uh, I'll have the, the coding sequence, then I'll, then I'll have uh, the Mars, then the Terminator, and, uh, and so on. Okay, so after doing this and selecting all of my, uh, my fragments or my inserts, what I'm going to do is, of course, cut them with BSA1. This is just a simulation, remember, but uh, this will help 
skew a lot and it did help me a lot in, uh, in my design. Okay, so I have five fragments. I'm gonna cut all of them with BSA1. Of course, I'm gonna have, uh, after the cut, I'm gonna have three fragments because I have two BSA1 sites flanking the, my fragment of interest. And of course, the tiny pieces that will be on the sides will be left out and they will not they will not uh, ligate to each other, okay? So in this way, you're basically eliminating the BSA1, uh, BSA1 restriction site, okay? So BSA1 will not cut again in your final construct. So this is what allows cyclical restriction ligation. Okay, so this is going to be my final product right here, six fragment assembly, right? And uh, this is going to be exactly the, the plasmid that I showed you earlier on the, on the gel. The, the final assembled plasmid, which I'll transform into, into E. coli. Of course, you can use six fragments or two fragments or 52 fragments if you want. Right, so um, hopefully this has been useful. Uh, a tiny introduction into Golden Gate cloning. Again, you can check out my article in which I have all of the protocols available. The article is posted as a preprint, of course, on BioArchive, but hopefully this, uh, this has, been, uh, has been useful. So if you have any more questions, I would seriously appreciate leaving, uh, leaving feedback or just tell me what I don't know, you guys want to see in, uh, in the future regarding videos. So have a nice one.